Today is my birthday and I think that we need to make a birthday mead. Let's try it. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today is my birthday and I wanted to make a birthday cake mead. So what I'm gonna be doing is uh, using this birthday cake flavoring from Amaretti and uh, it's something that's very niche, very kind of weird. I've tried to do this with a, quote, regular mead, um, meaning just normal honey, water, and yeast. It doesn't really work super well. So what we're making today is a birthday boche, and um, we're just gonna kind of zoom through this process. Basically with a boche, you put your honey into a pot, something like this, you heat it up for X amount of time, it changes certain characters and flavors within the honey, makes it a different kind of mead, but I think it'll be more suitable for a birthday cake flavoring because the Boche side has um, has quite a bit of flavor for itself, but the I think a darker mead, a more complex rich mead will be better for just you know birthday cake flavoring. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, a grand total of three and a half pounds of honey into here. I'll go ahead and tell you my recipe. It is gonna be one gallon of water, three and a half pounds, or sorry, uh, three and a quarter gallon of water, three and a half pounds of orange blossom honey, five, or not five grams, two grams of Lauven D47. I'm using this yeast because I did a test between um, a Boche, uh, this, the D47 and the 71B and the D47 was a little better, in my opinion. I'm using two grams of that, and then um, I don't know how much of this flavoring yet, but we'll talk about that. So the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and heat up some honey. I will go ahead and go through the whole bocheting process. If you wanna see how to boche something, uh, go check out my video, making a boche from beginning to end. And let me go ahead and make my boche now. Okay, so what I did was I heated up my honey for 45 minutes, I boiled it, and I'll show you on the screen, this is my honey wheel that you see right now. Um, I was gonna go for a full hour, but then I decided that 45 minutes would be enough um, after looking at the coloring. Anyways, again, um, if you wanna see if the full boche thing, go check out that video. So now we're gonna mix in the rest of our ingredients and make this mead. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my water into this bucket that's been sanitized with my star sand water and mix everything up real fast. I've mixed everything up. I can't take a gravity reading yet. This thing is too hot and it will askew what the actual gravity reading is. So I'm gonna wait uh, probably about 45 minutes or so and let this thing cool down and then we're gonna take a gravity reading and add our birthday cake flavoring into the primary and of course add our yeast. This is cooled down. I have my sample here. The starting gravity is 1.092 which means that we're at roughly about a 12% I believe. I'll put it on the screen. But um, a boche naturally ends up sweet because some of these sugars are caramelized meaning they're not fermentable anymore. So with that starting gravity, we'll probably not end at 1.000. We'll probably end around 1.005 is my prediction. So let's go ahead and pour this back in. We have our starting gravity. Uh, Boches also need some extra help in regards to uh, nutrients because again, you've burned some of the honey, which is the nutrient for the yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my required nutrient in, which is one teaspoon. And I'm gonna put some uh, yeast energizer in. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and throw my yeast in. Remember we're using two grams of uh, the Lauvin D47. The very last thing we're gonna do before we put our airlock on and everything is add one ounce of this uh, birthday cake flavoring. I will be putting um, part of my flavoring into the primary, part into the secondary. I'm gonna put one ounce in uh, to start with and I believe that'll be a good you know, good amount for it to ferment on in the beginning to impart some flavor. We'll add some in the secondary and to of course add more birthday cake flavoring. Everything is mixed in together. Water, yeast, honey, birthday cake flavoring. I can put my lid on now, put my information down, write down everything, including the starting gravity, all that stuff. And let's let it ferment and go through the primary. We are now through the primary of this birthday cake boche. 
And um, I definitely think I'm going to call this thing the birthday boy Shay. Um, I feel like that's just that's just too appropriate in this case. So uh, I have the meat here. We are going to first of all, before I go too crazy and start mixing things up, I know it's finished fermenting because I saw the airlock. Um, it's you know, stopped bubbling completely, which is not totally a sign that it's finished, but uh, I'm very confident because everything is settled to the bottom. We're gonna find out for sure though. I'm gonna go ahead and rack this into this carboy, and then we're gonna take a gravity reading, we'll double, make double sure that this thing is finished fermenting, and then of course we'll be back, uh, we'll, you know, taste test it and do that stuff. So let me move this over first. One reason I really like fermenting in buckets is because um, while I did lose a little mead here at the bottom, you can see uh, I was able to put more than one gallon in, which means that when I racked this over, I got one gallon. Yes, I sacrificed just a little bit, but if you had, if I had fermented this in this glass cardboard from the beginning, I guarantee you I would have lost more. So there's a lot of sediment, a lot of dead yeast, all that jazz in there, probably some birthday cake flavoring. Let's go ahead and get a quick taste test of this thing. Um, I said we would take a guard reading first. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Pretty confidence done. But, um, ooh, smelling it. It definitely has the typical, atypical Boche smell, which to me is very caramely. Um, it has, I always equate this, like, smokiness maybe to, like, a whiskey-esque taste I get from almost every Boche. Kind of getting that on the nose. You definitely... Mm, you get a little bit of that birthday cake smell, like the sweetness of it, the frosting side, but not quite like the most prominent thing. Let's taste it. Whoa. Okay. Um, surprisingly fruity. Maybe my brain's thinking sweetness and fruit for some reason. Yeah, it definitely smells sweet. It is done. I can tell that for sure. It has a little bit of residual sweetness. It's not super sweet. Um, but it's a little bit, I, I'm getting more confident that this birthday cake boche might be a thing, can work. Um, yeah, that's interesting. The flavor is very light. I, I do get a little bit of that birthday um, cake flavoring, but it's very, it's at the end of the palate. It's more so like if you know the taste of frosting it's kind of that sweetness you get from frosting and that atypical taste that's there that's like kind of like fake sugar sometimes um yeah okay so here's what i'm going to do i when i move this over i did get a little bit of, of you know stuff mixture in so stuff's got to settle back to the bottom and we need to take a gravity reading because we have to also plan how we're going to put more birthday cake flavoring in. So let me go ahead and take my gravity reading. All right, our gravity reading shows that we're at 1.008, just a little bit before 1.010. So uh, we started at 1.092, at 1.008. Mathematically, that makes sense that we're probably around 10.5%. I'm gonna put the correct answer on the screen right now. But um, there is residual sweetness because of Beauchang the Boshang of the honey caramelizes some, giving it uh, or making it to where it can't be fermented on. So that's why we, we have residual sweetness. Does that mean if I put more sugars in this thing that it will not ferment? No, because, um, or I mean, yeah, no. So if I put more sugars into this thing, uh, what will happen is the yeast will eat anything they actually can eat. And that would mean that they would eat more sugars like my birthday cake flavoring. My next step, I'm gonna put my airlock back onto this thing. I'm gonna let it set for probably a couple more days at least, um, maybe a week or two, and let everything settle back to the bottom. When this is settled to the bottom, I'll rack it into a new container to get off the old sediment. Then I'm going to take in, I will actually stabilize this thing. So I'm gonna stabilize it, which some of you are not a fan of this, but I'm gonna stabilize it with potassium sorbate, which will completely halt fermentation. Then, uh, I'm gonna take and add more birthday cake flavoring. So, I'm gonna put my airlock back on and then I'll be back in a moment when this thing's ready for more flavoring. It's been about ooh, a week, maybe a week and a half. Um, I just haven't had time to do anything with this. But, we are now going to take and add some more of that birthday cake flavoring like I, talk, like I talked about a second ago. So, 
let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab a scale. I'm gonna try and um, I'm going, going to add the flavor to taste and then I will tell you how much I've added. All right, so all I did was add a half of an ounce of our flavoring again and it degassed a little bit in the process because um, I had not, you know, degassed it really. I hadn't really stirred it up. So let's go and taste it. Yeah, that is definitely, uh, I get that, the poking flavor of the frosting. So it's very uh, sweet, obviously, because of birthday cake. But that, uh, I think many of you might relate to like that, that, I can't quite explain it. The stereotypical taste of frosting. It tastes like your normal vanilla frosting to me. Yeah, the, interesting. Surprisingly, the Beauchang side, I think the caramelization of the honey um, actually makes this thing, the birthday cake flavoring a little more, not necessarily palpable, but it does help it blend better for the mead. Uh, you do get the honey character, which I believe is the most important part of a mead, even with the birthday cake mead. Um, this thing doesn't attribute, or the birthday cake flavoring side is not, um, I, would not I would not say it's the full cake. It is like the frosting, really, the main taste of what birthday cake is. So, only half an ounce more, and we have ourselves our fully flavored now birthday cake mead. And I believe now, if I have done everything correctly, after I stabilize this with sorbet, um, adding this sugar in that I just did should not kick up fermentation. But before I bottle, to really make sure that that's true, so I don't have any, any bottles blow up on me essentially, I'm gonna let this thing, I'm gonna stick my airlock, airlock back on and let this sit for another day or two. And then if I don't see any fermentation, meaning the yeast are actually dead, uh, I will go ahead and bottle it. So let me go ahead and wait a few days and see what happens. All right, it's been another two days and I have not seen any re-fermentation. So that means that this thing can be bottled. I realized I forgot to take a final gravity reading. So the final gravity reading for this thing, um, to remind you, it started at 1.092. After the primary, it ended at 1.058. I'm sorry, not 1.092 starting uh, 1.008 for the after primary gravity. And now we are setting at, we are setting at 1.010. So just that little bit of birthday cake flavoring that we added um, helped to provide a little bit of sweetness, just a small, small, small amount of gravity. And it's time to go ahead and bottle it. So I am gonna go ahead and do that and cap it and do all those things. Let me go ahead and do that. And we're done, that's the end. So I have here, I got a grand total of six beer bottles, 12 um, ounce beer bottles, a 24 ounce beer bottle, and then one of these Grolsch bottles, which I think is somewhere around 13 or 14 ounces maybe, I could be wrong. But this thing's really good. It's very fruity, that um, 0 0.01 of sweetness, or gravity, excuse me, provides sweetness that kind of further um, builds upon the birthday cake idea. So obviously we have the frosting flavor. We've got caramelized honey character from the Beauchamp process. The sweetness, uh, it's a very, it's a dessert, definitely a dessert mead, but it's still pretty good and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I'll show you, um, my labels kind of look like this. I'll put it up here right now. And I put a label on each one of them, so they kind of, it looks pretty nice in my opinion. Um, and this is the Birthday Boy Shea, as I'm calling it, uh, even though it's really not too clever of a name, but oh well. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I really love making meads, and this one was a lot of fun to do. Obviously, it took some time. I think from start to finish, this one was 45 days. Yeah, from start to finish, this one was about actually 40 days. So, um, you know, take some time, it will get better with age. I will definitely be doing a taste test in the future of this one. And uh, I do all my taste tests, not on this channel, but on the Man Made Mead Extras channel. So if you wanna see a future taste test of this or anything else that I've made or commercial meads or even my podcast, go check out the Man Made Mead Extras channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day um, and I'll see you next time.
Cheers. 